All right, so just now I made a motion on the Senate floor to bring Senate Bill 13, which is the Abolition of Abortion Act in Oklahoma, from committee uh, straight to the Senate floor. Uh, made the motion. They did recognize the motion. Uh, they moved to table the motion, uh, which is essentially to kill the bill. Um, I requested a roll call vote on, on their tabling motion. Uh, so we got a roll call vote for senators. Uh, myself, Senator Nathan Dom, Senator Chris Kidd, and Senator Roland Peterson were the only votes in favor of hearing Senate Bill 13. Uh, there was a couple people who weren't there, but the majority of the rest of the Senate uh, voted to not hear it. What kind of happened there? Because it looked like it was going to run, but it's not going to run, and then out of nowhere, it just popped up. Yeah, so there was a big delay. Uh, I don't know how long it was, probably an hour or so. Everybody was trying, kind of figuring out what happened uh, or what was going on. And really what it came down to is Senate leadership, uh, they were trying to figure out what they were going to do uh, regarding Senate Bill 13 um, because it was a valid motion uh, that involved the entire Senate body. That's the first time that has been done uh, in the nation with actually abolishing abortion. Uh, so it was a big deal. And so they were trying to figure out what they were going to do. They, uh, they did acknowledge it was an authorized motion. So they finally kind of just uh, accepted the fact that here it is, we're going to have to do something with it. And so they, it was a real quick deal. Uh, they read the, the clerk read the motion. Senator David, uh, the floor leader, moved to table it, and then we voted. So it was a very, very quick deal. But the leading up to it, there was a lot of discussions going on about um, what they were going to do about it. By tabling it, it's effectively dead. It is final action. So Senate Bill 13, the abolition of abortion act in Oklahoma this year is dead. Uh, I did talk to a lot of senators, inform them this is not going away. Uh, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. This is the direction it's going, and all of them knew that. So it was almost, uh, it was almost your kind of your establishment Republican pro-life hypocrisy. It was kind of their last stand, is really what it was. It's got to be the last stand. Bill. It is. I, I mean, I won't be here next year. There will be there will be people in this building who will file an abolition uh, bill next year, uh, and I'll be here to support them in any way I can. But I will not be holding uh, state office. So what happened? Uh, you know, we'll keep uh, we'll keep ch uh, chugging away on educating the public, uh, which is kind of the easiest thing to do because when we, uh, you know, these pastors and these organizations and myself, when we talk to the the general public in Oklahoma, ninety nine percent of the time they are on board. They understand, yeah, the incremental approach is is complete failure. Uh, these organizations don't believe uh, children have the same rights that we do, and they immediately. Uh, sign on to and buy into the movement of abolition. So that will continue over the next year, and you'll see, uh, you know, double the people up here for the rally next year. Just so I'm clear, uh, procedurally, how did that, it was voted down in the committee? No, so it, it was never given a committee hearing. Okay. So I do like the legislative process. Uh, and I did uh, for two years. We tried to work it through the committee, and they would deny it a hearing, deny it a hearing, deny it a hearing, because they didn't want to be on record voting for or against it. Uh, they would, they were able to default to the chairman and just say, well, the, the chairman didn't want to hear it. Um, so it never was voted on in committee. There is a Senate rule that allows any bill to be taken from committee directly to the floor with a two-thirds vote. That is, that was the motion I made today. Uh, you know, from their their standpoint, I think it was. Uh, for mine, it was much bigger than that. I think uh, we've got the just a, a holocaust going on. You know, in Oklahoma, you got 14 children murdered every day, um, and for the first time in the history of the United States, a state had the ability to vote on a measure that would actually bring an immediate end to abortion, and uh, Republican-controlled Senate voted to not take it up. They will. We're fighting a fight that we can't they will argue that um, it's just blatantly not true. I mean, how many how many attorneys do I have to get lined up telling them that if they want to overturn Roe v. Wade, the only way to do it is to offer a bill of equal protection? But on the other hand, if you're like me and don't believe that Roe v. Wade is constitutional ruling and the Supreme Court had no authority to do that, uh, this is the bill that needs to be passed. Uh, same thing with slavery. The Supreme Court ruled that slaves were private property and had no rights. They were wrong. We righted it. Uh, they ruled that you can kill innocent children. They were wrong, and a state's going to have to right it. Pastor, you brought up a uh, petition with hundreds plus names of, uh, uh, of other pastors, and it's got an 
for the paper it's written on right now. Well, I would disagree. I think what it represents is a whole bunch of pastors and churches whose hearts are broken on one sense. We're mourning the death of the over 5,500 babies that were slaughtered in our in our state last year. These are our our uh, brothers and sisters. They're preborn image bearers of God. And today, uh, I think what we saw is just further in line with what we've been seeing as pro-life regulation bills have been increasing, the number of them have been increasing, at the same time, simultaneously, the number of abortions have been increasing in our state. And so when we see 100% down the line pro-life legislators make decisions like this, and we see abortions going up, then we're saying something is desperately wrong, and not just desperately, not only are are, are our hearts broken for these unborn, but we are, we're fearful for the judgment that's coming upon the people who would blatantly, in the face of God, disrespect and dishonor and then regulate the murder of our of our preborn neighbors. And so what we're asking for is leave the pro-life establishment. We call this a plexit. Leave them because they don't want to see abortion ended. This is a football game without end zones. We want to see it ended. We want to see righteous bills put in place like Senate Bill 13. We had a chance. And you saw today where their hearts stood on behalf of the unborn in our state. They didn't want this to pass. They put it out whenever all of us had left the chamber. And then they pulled it out whenever whenever your cameras left so that they didn't have to be held accountable. And us pastors signed these petitions to say, God sees everything that you do. God has seen you. And on your day to stand, were you too frail? Were you too weak? Are you acting like God doesn't know? He knows exactly what's in the hearts of men. He judges our intentions and our hearts. And he has laid laid our conscience in us. And he's written his law in our hearts. We do not stand without excuse. We won't stand now before our conscience, and we won't stand on the day of Christ's return, in, in the day of judgment. So we're pleading with you. Repent. Legislate according to God's word and according to the Constitution which is under God, and put forward righteous bills and stop killing bills that would save all babies' lives, and putting forward instead bills that, on the outside, pretend to save lives, but don't. It would take a lot of courage to pass a bill like this in the first day of the nation to do something like that. Mm-hmm. Did this legislature show a lack of courage? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I think... Uh, Some might call it it courage. Uh, I don't think that it requires courage to obey God. God would have us obey him. And if we have everything we need supplied to us through the cross of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sin that's offered to us, then we need not worry about men. We need not fear men. We are to fear God, obey God. And in that sense, who needs courage? We're just doing what's obedient to our maker. So would it require them to be courageous? Well, if they're looking for approval and the praise of men, then perhaps. But if we're looking for the, we, we operate according to God's word and we, we obey him and we worship him, then there, we don't need courage. We just need obedience. What's the next step for you guys? For us? Well, prayerfully, we will continue to preach in our churches and we will continue to to speak out for the lives that are going to be killed today. Uh, he said, uh, Senator Silk said there were 14. Well, because last year we had we passed more pro-life reg- regulation, uh, this year we jumped up 500 more abortions uh, last year than, than this year. So there's actually 15 babies being killed every day. So we're going to stay around. And last year, we had a, between last year and this year, we've had a tenfold increase in the number of people who have been active for abolishing abortion in our state. If we have a tenfold increase next year in 30,000, then uh, perhaps then they'll listen. Here's the reality. I represent um, a group of pastors, and I'm a, I'm a Southern Baptist, an Oklahoma Baptist. We have over 579,000 members in our churches. We have over 1,750 churches. 
if even 1% of those churches and even 1% of the 579,000 members would just get on board and start speaking out, all these uh, legislators, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't hide. They couldn't hide. They could try, but we would be running people to replace them in every district. And I hope that's what happens. I think that God is laying on hearts of men now to run for office and to replace these people so that we can put forward righteous bills that honor God and that save our pre-born neighbors. You've got a list now of legislators who voted against this. Yes. What are you doing with that list? Do we? Yes. Yeah. Here, let me, let me get something. Might be a premature well. question. I'm sorry. No. Uh, yeah. Pastor, just real quick, give me your first and last name. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dusty Devers. I'm a pastor at Grace Community Church of Elgin, Oklahoma. And it's D-U-S-T-Y. Yep, D E E V E R S. I played baseball at Oklahoma City University, so I'm a I'm an Oklahoma man. Yeah. Perfect. Come on. Yeah. Give me your first and last name too, Bruce. Uh, so it's uh, Russell Hunter, R U S S E L L H U N T E R, with Free the States. And so what we want to make clear is that today in the state of Oklahoma, we had a righteous legislator bring forward a bill to abolish abortion as murder in the state of Oklahoma. It was not the ACLU that kept that bill from being heard. It was not Planned Parenthood. It was not the liberal Democrats or progressives. It was the pro-life establishment, the pro-life Republican establishment leaders who killed a bill to end abortion in Oklahoma. So as Senator Stilk has said, he's going to put this bill forward. Um, our, the, the abolitionist movement is going to continue to put this bill forward over and over and over again. And what Pastor Devers is explaining is that You've got the pro-life movement, the pro-life establishment, killing bills to end abortion, and that has to end. So what we've done is we've taken a record of all the folks that voted to table Senate Bill 13, and we will be campaigning against them. We will be attempting to replace each and every legislator that said they will not hear Senate Bill 13. And it's sad to say that only four legislators in the state of Oklahoma stood up for life today. The rest of them said, we will not abolish abortion in Oklahoma. We will bow to the Supreme Court. We're going to keep abortion legal here. And sadly, a lot of them were pro-lifers. A lot of them were professing Christians. And the vast majority of them were Republicans. That's all I got. Anybody else want to tap in? Okay. All right. Good. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you. That's fine. Bill, you want to say that? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Bill. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, just give me your first and last name. Bill Askell, A-S-C-O-L. Uh, Bethel Baptist Church in Owasso. These men have already spoken about how grieved we are, and we are forming groups uh, with the express purpose to get our people to pray, that God will raise up legislators who will do the right thing, and then we will mobilize Baptists across the state of Oklahoma to let these folks know that you can't hide anymore. They've been hiding under the brush arbor of a pro-life movement. They demonstrated today they are not interested in life. We heard arguments before this about drugs. Protect the most vulnerable. Protect the most vulnerable. The most vulnerable were shut out today in this, in this action that was taken. And I'm grieved at the way the legislature functions. It was a sleight of hand move just before lunch. We're not going to be deceived anymore. We're not going to be asleep anymore. We're awake. We're watching, paying attention. And we're going to move. And God helping us, we're going to move these people in this state to send a message that you are not safe if you are not on board to stop abortion in Oklahoma.